So this is the brand list that I've been working with recently, and it's 60 cards, and I'm sure if you look at it very closely, there's some odd ratios going on here, and I promise I'll try to explain as much of them as I can. But yeah, the reason I'm on 60 is because I, I gotta run going second cards this format, dog. Like it's it's so hard to win this format by just playing with just engine. You need like going second cards to help you play into boards and with Branded, because the engine is so big and because you need to, and you have so little room for non-engine, is that if you try to play a 40 card deck, you end up with, especially if you want to run Maxi too, because Maxi is like, why would you not want to run Maxi, right? But if you do, you end up with only like five or maybe, maybe six slots to run non-engine whip in a 40 card deck. And that's just not enough to, for this format. And another issue with Branded is that because you don't have room for non-engine, you can't really go with a hand trap approach this format. I would prefer to go with a hand trap approach over a board breaker approach. But in order to to run hand trap this format, you need to run enough to where you can consistently open two. Because you need to open two hand traps against all the pop decks this format in order to actually have a chance of stopping them. And in order to consistently open two, not even consistently open two, in order to have an over 50% chance of opening two hand traps, you have to run 13 hand traps in 40 cards deck or a ratio of 19 hand traps in a 60 card deck and let, let me tell you there, there's there's no chance in hell that brand and despia can fit in 13 hand traps in a 40 card build or 19 hand traps in a 60 card build so you know because of, because of that because you can't play enough hand traps though consistently open to i defaulted back to board breakers you got at least brandon is a deck where when brandon runs board breakers usually a lot of board breakers are bad going first they're they're like kind of honestly they're dead cards going first for so branded it's not so much of the case for example triple tactics thrust uh you can do more than just thrust set in permanent branded thrust lets you beat ash on branded fusion like just thrust set fusion duplication fusion duplication doesn't even have to use branded fusion too you can fusion duplication a uh, fusion deployment as well if they decide to max you on the fusion deployment then you can thrust for Duplication on your opponent's turn, you fuse an deployment out in Albas and fuse on during their turn, like that. It's it's pretty fine too. And uh, you know, triple tactics. It's good going first when you get hand trapped, and going second. Uh, so you can use this as a take effect. You can take your opponent's monsters, and if you happen to not be in one of those hands where you fusion lock yourself with like deployment or brand fusion, you can link it off into Verte, which. It's very funny how you tactics take and then make Verte and then make a Mirage that way. But a lot of times, triple tactics threats when going second, you can use it to draw cards too. And drawing cards is great because because we're not running hand traps in this build and we're running board breakers. The EV of the cards you draw off tactics are way higher than the average deck. So like the average deck, if they tactics going second, there's a chance they just draw into more hand traps. Like they draw into an imperm if they already have a body on the field or they draw into like more copies of Valor or stuff like that which are just not good when you're already going second but in uh, a deck like this that runs a lot of board breakers you can tactics and hit board breakers too like you can tactics and go in, hit it thrust hit super poly hit droplets and these are all live and if you hit more engine as well that's also good you know you oftentimes the best uh effect for thrust going second is the draw two and obviously go first the best uh, effect is uh, just hand ripping them if you can play and if you can't play two cards getting two cards into seeing more engine does oftentimes unbrick you as well and uh yeah so droplets I, I like droplets but also we need to run we have a uh, one two three four twelve board breakers which sounds like a lot but in 60 it's it's more equivalent to like eight board breakers and forty, so it's not guaranteed that you open one yet. So that's why I'm still running droplet. Droplet is very nice. I I really, whenever droplet is uh, as a good board breaker, I always like to include in brand Espio. So basically, not cashier format, as you can use it to uh, dodge 
uh, the effect negation too. Because a lot of people will still try to... Because the correct place to effect negate, like Imperm or Vader against Brandon, is still on your searchers, such as your Alibur or your kit. And you can use Droplet to not only negate their board, but also dodge effect negation. So that's really huge. And there's other benefits of Droplet, such as uh, you can use Droplet to send your own fusions to the grave. By sending your fusions to the grave, then that lets you revive them with Brandon, Brandon Banishment, and it lets you revive them with Quem as well. And then that lets you reuse your Mirror Jade multiple times. So that's really cool. And Super Poly is like the next best war breaker. The, the thing is, I, I'm not a fan of Super Poly and Brandon right now. And it's because it takes extra deck spots. And if you saw my other com combo video where uh, th there was a combo that involved two Grand Grignol, and you don't have room to run any interesting stuff in your extra deck. Now, I don't have room to run Bortle of Furious Dragon for background matchups. I don't have the. I don't have the option for two Grand Grignol play. I don't really have a lot of fusion targets, even for Albas. For example, we're, we don't have. We're not also not running really Brigrand, which also makes a uh, kit no longer a brand in high spirits target, so it's a little consistency cut there. But I mean, I figured, like, low key, I wish I could cut this card, but this is a format where I you need Ward Breakers to go to, to help go second, so. You know, Super Poly is not terrible, and Super Poly, you can also do the thing, same thing with Droplet, where you can use Super Poly to dodge effect negation on your Alibur, so that's really nice. Like, if, if a Math Mech player thinks they're slick trying to Valor your Alibur, you just Super Poly your Alibur, and their uh, Terror Hurts into a Mud Dragon, and then you get the search anyways, and then you can power through their, their Super Factorial like it's nothing. I guess I should cover the rust targets that aren't like the engine you know like uh diffusion cards and one evenly matched I'm sure you saw that intro against that snake eyes pearly deck yeah <laughs> evenly goes hard against some matchups not against every matchup so that's why it's still just a one-off and huge new location obviously if you run thrust in a branded list you gotta run duplication for uh you know just a way to uh, copy ash to, to copy brand fusion to beat ash and uh, brand banishment. Honestly, you can probably cut this card. This card is not really necessary. I've, I've bricked on it more than I found it useful, to be honest. But yeah, speaking of, of the weird ratios now, so three Albas, uh, the one tragedy, three Albas, two Alibird, one Mercurio. That's all standard. Uh, these next, this next row of monsters. So I have two Kit and two Cartesia. A lot of decks uh, only run one and one. Uh, Honestly, I just, the name of the game is, I don't want a brick. I just want to be able to play the game with Brandon. Brandon's not the deck that's like 99% consistent. You know, Brandon isn't something like uh, super heavy, or maybe not super heavy, but it's not something that has 20 million starters that it's impossible to brick with. You do, with the brand opening going to one, yet another consistent hit on top of Brandon Fusion already being at one, and like your Alibur is going to two, you just need ways to play the game, so that's why I included these copies. Kit at worst is just the it's just the minus one way to search brand fusion. Like it's it's fine. I'm never sad that I'm drawing kit, you know. And you can use if you draw kit with other starters, you can use it as an extender, assuming you resolve the brand fusion, obviously. Because if you then dump a or you have a brand high spirits, you can when you, once you get the Albas fusion in the grave, you can special summon kit, and it's not even like a conflicting normal summon that way. It it, it it's fine. I've Honestly, I've been wanting to bump Kit up to 3 just to get more consistency, and I was before I put it in Super Polys. And same with Cartesia. Cartesia is basically Cartesia with almost any other monster gets you to your combo one way or another. So as long as you don't drop the Cartesia by itself, it is a, it acts as another starter. And uh, 2 Quem. Quem is also sort of a starter. It it's, uh, has a bunch of 2 card combos that gets you combo with... Uh, other cards in your deck, such as Lubelion or Albion. Now, it's it doesn't quite work with every monster like Cartesia does. So, I'm running the two just so I also run two just so I can always have one to summon from the deck with either Titanic Clad or Grand Cremio. Because if you play this deck long enough, you realize that Quem is honestly one of the best parts of your end board. So, always having one available in the deck to special summon is so you could use it to revive all your fusions. It's really nice, and you can use it to always make sure that you have a Fallen of Elvaz and Graves. So that's your 
uh, uh, spells like Banishment, well, not Banishment, but like Brand and Red, uh, and your Rin Rin Revive, they're always alive. Sarnir is that is limited uh, three with Albion. You could potentially cut Albion to two and put one of these other Albas monsters to three, but I think Albion is generally the best one since uh, again it combos with all of these with these to get full combo. It also it's a dragon, so it is the best one out of all of these for Brand and High Spirits. And again, that's also Brand High Spirits also combos with the Bistios and the Fallen Dalbas, but yeah, and uh, you can dump. You, you don't always dump Retribution. Obviously, if you have a Brick Hand, then you use Albion to dump Retribution so that it has the highest chance of unbreaking you. But sometimes you want to dump Fallen Dalbas so you have an extra Albas in Grave because you know when you activate Brand of Fusion and you, you make Mirror Jade, your Lubelion shuffles the Albas back in the deck so you don't actually have one in Grave. So you oftentimes want the Albion to send another Albaz to the Grace just so as we mentioned all your revival cards like Brand and Red are live again. Also in Weird Hands you can you send a Dark to stun a Bistial and then you know <laughs> if you're not Fusion Lock you can use that to make Verte. Verte comes up quite often in this deck and not just with the combo I showed you with Cartacea plus uh, Fallen Dalbaz. But yeah, three Albion, three Lubelion, just just cause again the name of the game is like these are all two card combos with each other. So, uh, yeah, Lubelion plus any plus you know Cartasia, Quem, or High Spirits also full combo. The Druid Swarm is weird. The Druid Swarm is not necessary, but I figure I'm not running Magnema because for Branded the best Bistio is Sarnir. Sarnir gets you your combos going. Uh, Magnema does not get you your combos going. So. It's really just the you're never gonna search for it, so it's just a random one up you draw into. And I figured that Druid Swarm would be better since if you're gonna be searching for one, you're probably gonna be searching for Druid Swarm more than Magnum Book. Since going second, you can use Druid Swarm as a board breaker, as opposed to Magnum Book, which uh if you wanna break a board, you're probably not gonna search Magnum Book anyways, so yeah. But you can cut this too if you want to fit other cards. And uh, these are more copies of Alibur, 3-3, three, 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 one brand in white for combos, uh, one brand lost. I'm not running other uh, targets for Lubelion. You you don't need to run other targets for Lubelion. For go going first, you know, you always want brand lost up, and even going second, you want to place brand lost up, because placing brand lost up going second forces your opponent to interact with it. If they don't, then you just get to do you get to play your fusions for free, and they can't interact with you at all. So it's I always want to get branded lost. The only time you would potentially even want to consider a second uh, Lubelion target is if you like heart if you hard acts of brand lost anyways, and then or you hard search it going second with something like an Alibur or a Kit, and then later on in the combo. You can you get Lubelion on the field, so then you can place another one. Although that feels like honestly, that feels kind of win more because at that point, if you already stuck a lost and you got through your combo, you probably already broke their board already. So it's it's like you if you really need to place another one. But uh, if Branded Beast is okay, I suppose if you're also very scared of floodgates, Branded Beast does have the niche of uh, killing floodgates. I would not play Regain in this deck. Regain is not too great in regular brand, especially in a build that does not run Bistios, which should be most builds because Bistios aren't exactly the best hand traps right now. And brand regain, it only really gets you value if you already resolve the cards that uh, uh banish from your grave. You know, if you resolve brand in white or branded in red, or you resolve a Rin Burning Grave. But at that point, if you're resolving those cards or a Mirror Jade, you're probably already in a winning position anyway. And the branded, the Regain just gets you a, you know, a random draw. Or else I would almost always rather just place brand and loss and be able to save more safely do my plays first so that I, that I so that I can actually get to my end board first. And when else I get there, I don't need extra value off the regain, for example. And again, there's not many good targets off of the regain in the first place. You you're not real even if you did run Magnum, but you wouldn't be searching Magnum but with Bellion most most of the time because you need to. Get, Search starting to get your combo going, so it's it's like you don't have a value revive off of the regain either. So I, I just I would advise against running regain in Brandon 
And honestly, if you're not that afraid of stun, I would just not run beast either and just stick with the boss as for one to on target. And yeah, the last row of ran and red, it's a you know staple. Red one distribution. I can see the argument for running two sometimes because you now have to access brand infusion via retribution adding it back. Sometimes it's nice to just have another retribution to set because retribution is a very nice interruption. Literally just solemn warning that recycles their resources. Um, yeah, you could play it over the banishment. Honestly, I, banishment and sword, these two are completely not necessary. Sword is for like, uh, you know, the combo I showed last time, but also when you can get a uh, quem. So like when the lines where you banish from a courier, sometimes you can just summon a quem on your opponent's turn with a grand grandiole and then quem can dumb the brand sword then sword can directly add back from a courier that way so just get an extra interruption on your opponent's turn but general in general this card is not very needed at all to be honest you can get a way of cutting brand and sword and management and just running more starters which i might consider doing that uh later on and yeah the extra deck is so all, as far as I'm concerned, everything from here to here is a staple. Dragostapelia, Titanic Lad, because you it gets you your Quem, two Albion, two Mirror Jade, one Lubelion, one Grand Grignol, one Vrindbrum, one Albion, one Guardian Chimera, and one Verte. Yes, Verte does come up quite a bit. And uh Despian Caritas is an alternate target to summon off of Grand Grignol. If you don't need to summon Quem, for example. Like, if you already have a Quem on the field, then you can use your Grand Grignol to summon Coritis, or you can just summon this as a desperation move, as you'll see in one of the replays, just stay alive, because if you stay alive against your opponent, then, you know, you can you can uh, get into a grind game, and the grind game favors you, because the SPS, or Brandon's grind game, is amazing. And this just uh, helps you, makes it really hard for a lot of decks to just kill you through this, since you can turn all their attack to zero, and if they try to get rid of this, it floats into something like an Albaz, which then threatens to fuse on your opponent's turn, or it summons uh, something that gets you more follow-up on the next turn. And yeah, I've been really uh, liking this card. It's also, since we run Super super Poly now, it's a good Super Poly target, since you, you lead with Alley Bird, then you can just Alley Bird randomly fuse a, you can fuse a random card off your field into a Karaitis, and then Karaitis can uh, reduce their attack and then break and threaten to break their board that way, and also again the dodging the effect negation on the Alley Bird 2 by going by super poly into Despian Caritas. And then the Garu and Mud Dragon are the other super poly targets. And it's really tight. Like this extra could go up to 20 cards, and I still would not be able to fit in everything I want to fit in here. You notice I'm uh I'm not miss uh, playing uh Furious Dragon, I really want to include this, there's just, if I'm running Super Poly, there's just so little room for this. I'm not running Brigrand, and Brigrand is like basically a beast out of fusion, so it turns Kit into a high spheres target if I need to extend that way, and also search as Mercurior. Again, don't really have room to run this. Uh, there are other Super, super Poly targets, you can run like like Draco Equest for Baron plus Savage, which is a somewhat common end board, but it's just not common enough compared to Blood Dragon and Garua, because you have to run these two if you're running Super Poly. There's also, uh, what's that card called? Also Earth Golem at Ignister, which, where it's right here, which is a Cybers plus a Link Monster. So, you know, against Math Mech, if they have Each Soul plus Terra Herbs, this goes into that against any deck such as that plays Elf plus IP, which is <clears throat> Snake Eyes. <clears throat> uh, you can fuse that, but again, there's just no room in the extra to include that many Super Poly targets. So this build isn't 100% perfect, but it's like uh, pretty decent. It just, it just probably needs a few adjustments here and there. Maybe some uh, more starters for consistency. And oh, I almost forgot to go over some cards that aren't in this deck list that I'm sure people are going to wonder why they're not here. So the first one obviously is going to be that grass looks green. And I'm running a 60 card build so why don't I have grass up here? Well, in my opinion there are a few reasons why decks should 
go to 60 cards or should, should play a higher card count. And I mentioned earlier that one of the reasons I'm doing it is because I want to run more go second cards and more non-engine, which you just can't feasibly do with a lower deck size count. Also, Grand Despia is a deck that has a few engine requirements and a few bricks that you don't necessarily want to draw into. And by playing a higher deck size count, you, you just draw your bricks less often. Also, uh, compared to other decks, Brand and Despia plays in the max C better than most. So there's only a set number of outs to max C that you can really play in, in the game. And if you're playing a 60, one of the downsides is that you have a lower chance of drawing into your outs to max C. But since Brand and Despia can play in the max C at least somewhat decently, it's not as crucial for Branded to uh, uh, draw, see its max C outs as it is for other decks. Now, one of the reasons that I did not list to play 60 was that grass looks greener. Because uh, just mathematically, you shouldn't build, you shouldn't run 60 cards because of grass. Since this card is, is, is at 1, and it's only really accessible if you go second by resolving Triple Tactics Thrust, which is still only a 4 of. So, realistically, in half the games that you play, which are the games you're going first, you're running. 60 cards and lowering your consistency for a one-off if you're playing if you're building a city card deck just for grass which is just not the you know that's just not mathematically they're just not proper deck building like playing that many more cards just to, for a one card that you're not going to see in half your games most likely and another thing is in this deck specifically grass isn't even that good when you resolve it here because you gotta look at what are the good targets that you want to mill off grass. So you have Despian Tragedy, which is one of the only graveyard triggers you have, which searches you your uh, Despia cards. You have, uh, and then you have Albion and Bistio Sarnir, because these let you dump uh, brand spells in the grave that you can add back with Retribution. But first of all, Sarnir is a one, so that's automatically you, you lost like two extra good. Uh, mills potential mills off grass there and secondly it's milling these cards are only good if you mill something good to add off retribution right and you notice all of the brand spells are basically ran at one copy because brand fusion is limited and then you know white and red you only run one copy same with despian tragedy because you run one copies of these because you don't necessarily want to open these these aren't always these aren't usually starters in your hand and they contribute to bricking in your hand. There's a reason why they run them at one. And if you were trying to increase like the value of your grass mills, that would often involve putting copies of your branded spell traps or putting a Despian Tragedy at more than one co copy, which is going to reduce the consistency of your deck because you're just adding car more cards that you don't necessarily want to draw into just to so you could have a potential of milling better off of grass and tragedy there are if you want to bump up tragedy again you would bump it up for reasons not related to grass you would if you wanted to play a patchwork in it, for example or if you wanted to play a lure for more draw power that's when you would bump up tragedy to tragedy up from one copy you would not bump up tragedy for the one of grass you know that's just doesn't make sense but if you're not bumping up the cards that you want to mill off grass in the first place then Grass also does, does not even have that much of a value when you activate it. Like you might get, you know, one decent trigger off it. So it's like just not even more impactful than any other starter in your deck most of the time, even if you do resolve grass. And of course, grass runs the risk of over milling your resources, such as uh, too many albasses for your your brand infusions or uh, you uh, mill your one of uh, spell and traps to like loss, which then you can no longer place the blue bellion for free or brand red, in which case you can't set it for free off the Albion, stuff like that. Sometimes grass can even hurt you as much as it helps you. And of course, it's not even good for baiting out Ash anymore because uh, it's at one. So, like, really, what are the chances of you opening your one of grass before you do your brand fusion place, right? It's, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm not uh, the biggest hand of grass in this deck. And uh, next is a uh, Got a gimmick public lock and the dear servant. So these kind of go hand in hand. Gimmick public lock, lock is still good 
I, I think it's still probably the best way to play the deck if you know you're going first. It's just that we're in the best of one, so I don't always know if I'm going first. And uh, it's not like this is bad or anything when you go first. It's like just one card that you can just discard if you if it's not good. It's it's like whatever. But it's just if I want to run Game Impact Nightmare, I'm also incentivized from the Dear Servant because the Dear Servant makes Game Impact public way more consistent. Again, even if you don't run the Bussy Phallus to get the one card uh, gimmick Pub and Nightmare Lock off of Nadir Servant, the Nadir still gives you basically a uh, gimmick Pub Lock if you draw with any other combination of like engine in your hand. And and yeah, but the, the thing is, the Nadir Servant, the Liam Pub Lock is kind of, it's not ideal going second, but it's whatever, it's just one card. Nadir Servant is really not good going second. It's uh, it helps consistency. I do like that it helps me unbrick when I'm going first, but I don't really want to activate this going second since if I do, that just means my plays are over and I have to move on to main phase three. So if I'm using the Deer Servant in the face of a board already, then that's not ideal because then I can't put up any more fusions. I can't put on any pressure or anything. I have to wait until the end phase and then. I get all my resources there, but at that point, if I didn't deal with their board, then it's not like like getting extra resources and getting a Cartesia on the field is going to help me in the face of uh, of like uh, you know five Snake Eyes monsters that are already on the field or like what whatever, right? It, it's I only really feel comfortable with a Deer Servant going second if I'm able to make plays that already break most of their board in the first place, and then I you know you can the Deer Servant for the the follow up. But at that point, if you've already broken their board with your Brandon engine, then this isn't really necessary. I feel like you're already probably in a good position, and this isn't ideal for helping you break boards, because again, it locks you out of your extra decks, and when you do this, it's the last thing you can pretty much, it's the last pressure play that you can uh, make against your opponent, which is, um, you know, it, it, it's not going to cut it if you didn't manage to break their board beforehand. Well, yeah, if you're interested in Brandon and you want to test it out for Duelist Cup, and you're also a whale because uh, I just realized there's two full rows of cards in the 60 card deck that's just URs. Like, oh my god, what? <laughs> this I didn't realize how extensive this deck was. I, I built this deck up over two years. But yeah, this is. God damn. Yeah, it, yeah, if you somehow have all the URs to build this deck, uh, I'm not saying this is the best way to play it or that I have the best build, but this is one of the builds that I've tested that does work somewhat and again if you uh, want to if you're getting started with the, with the deck I recommend uh, watching some of my videos where I go over some of the combos the basic combos you need to play this deck so oh, over on both sides of the screen here oh and of course check out some gameplay of this build in the other video I made